Hi, I'm Dai Cadet Charles Villabangan and good day everyone to our fellow cadets and to our dear professor. This video discussion is for educational use only. Our group is allowing our instructor, Captain Philip Alquino, to use this as an educational material. To proceed to the topic, Mooring Lines Issues in the Spotlight, where we will talk about the procedures, the Mooring Lines Hunting Tips, and the course outcome is to learn and refresh the knowledge of safety practices and the latest regulations related to the mooring lines issue. After discussion, the students will able to recognize and comply with safe working practices in mooring lines and link tips. Next is to establish procedures to be followed during mooring operation. <laughs> Lastly, they must knowledgeable to their actions to be taken during mooring and unmooring operation. With no further ado, vessels use mooring lines in order to be secured next to dock, pier, or terminal. The line may be rope, wires, or combination, rope with tails or wire with tails. The minimum size and number of required lines of a vessel are determined by classification society during construction and follow existing guidance of the IMO Circular 1175 or also known as the current under review. IACS recommendations and etc. in order to comply with SOLAS two requirements for safety mooring. Additional for tankered OC IMF has provided mooring equipment guidelines summarizing the concerns and requirements of major oil companies on safe mooring. In, two, in summer 2018, OCAIMF revised the guidance for mooring equipment with the fourth issue of mooring equipment guidelines. New definitions have been issued as ship design minimum breaking load or the LDBF, the line design breaking force, etc. A lot of information has also been provided on how to select lines and how to document their operational life on board line management plan mooring equipment register etc ocimf meg for review reviewing the guidance there are two issues that may require more clarifications for the operators as follows so first the mooring line issue number one is the first issue refers to the maximum breaking load at a, that a line should have in order to be purchased the guidance mentioned the guidance mentions the minimum as follows uh, based on ship design in bl the lines should have a minimum design breaking force or, or the ldbf from 100 to 105 percent however with uh what if an organization wants to purchase lines with more than that breaking level assuming that the guidelines the dd or for equipment is satisfied Mooring line issue number two is the second issue refers to the retirement retirement of a line or supportive equipment as tails in MEG4 guidance but also already considered to be industry standards reference is made to CI 2001 fiber rope inspection and retirement criteria and ISO 4309 both of these guides include objective evidence criteria based on inspection and visible condition the, these are very easy to be observed by the line user. Make for guidance for all mooring loose um, equipment has set a level again related to ship design, the MBL, called the residual strength. There is a level of set, of set to 75% of ship design MBL for all equipment. The problem is that the procedure of measurement of the residual um, strength of a line is a destructive procedure. This means that the subject of measurement will be destroyed. Thus, um, sampling measurement therefore ensure that um, the result will recover all similar equipment. So, the answer is, vessels use mooring lines in order, in order to be secured next to dock, pier or terminal. The lines may be ropes, wires or combination ropes with tails or wire with tails. The minimum size and number of required lines for a vessel are determined by the classifications of a society during construction and follow the existing guidance by IMO, which is the MC MSC Circulation 1175 currently under review. IACS Recommendation 10 
etc. in order to comply with the SOLAS 2 requirements for, for safe mooring. After all, even ship design MBL includes the definition minimum. For example, if the ship design MBL cal calculated to be 60 tons which provides a LDBF of 105% to 63 tons, is it wrong for a company to purchase lines with MBL 70 tons? Provided that the mooring equipment, winches, um, trucks, etc. can support this force and size. So, and if it is not wrong, what is the maximum breaking force for a line in order to be in a compliance with the guidance and existing regulations? This is a question that probably only vetting officers or OCIMF itself may answer. Considering that purchasing and retirement of mooring equipment is an expensive procedure, operators should be provided with clear instructions and requirements by regulators. OCIMF guidance for tanker operators has been available, but what is happening with the rest of the fleet, bulk carriers, containers, etc.? Additionally, what about terminal or ports facilities? With vessel size increasing, facilities more equipment may not be able to accommodate them. In this regard, regulatory bodies, mainly IMO and IC IACS, should reach to a common-based decision for such equipment, providing clear guidance for the construction size number and breaking force of mooring equipment and the maximum service life of rich part under normal environmental conditions procedures mooring line handling tips mooring and unmooring operations provide the circumstances for potentially serious accidents there is no doubt that this duty requires a good technique initially in lifting the heavy eye of the rope followed by a good pulling technique. Care must be taken, therefore, with the laying out of heavy mooring ropes and wire ropes or hosers. So, mooring and unmooring operations provide the, provide the circumstances for potentially serious accidents. Personnel should never stand in a bite of a rope under tension and should treat ropes and drums and bollards with utmost care so in order to prevent accidents um, the crew must be competent enough to work mooring and uh, to work mooring and unmooring operations in order to be safe and compatible to work this kind of job and lastly you need to be more attentive and have a proper communication so next slide is seafarers involved in mooring operations should be given additional instruction on the specific equipment and mooring configurations used on the vessel. This should include but may not be limited to. So, before entering a port, um, the captain must ensure a plan on how they will execute the mooring and unmooring operations without any disastrous or accidents. So, um, in order to be safe and compatible, um, they will um, they will plan and ensure on how they will execute the mooring and unmooring operations to avoid delay and execute well without accidents. So, so the next slide is the crew should make sure that there are enough manpower available to do the task safely. Personnel should never stand in the bite of a rope or near a rope under tension and they should treat ropes on drums and bollards with the utmost care. So when doing and unmooring operations, we must have enough manpower when perform when performing this job and most importantly you must wear your PPE or personal prote personal protective equipment um, also ensure that no extra personnel are present at the mooring station except for those who are involved in the operation 
Um, anyone who is not assisting in the mooring operation must be asked to leave the mooring station for his or her and others' safety. Detailed familiarization should be take place to all new joining seafarers regarding the installation, use, and hazards related to permanent and loose mooring, mooring equipment. Based on the risk assessment, appropriate control measures should be put in place. Action to be taken during the mooring and unmooring operation. A sufficient number of seafarers should always should always be available both forward and aft of the vessels to ensure the safety operation. A uh, supervising officer should be in charge of each mooring party and a uh, suitable means of communications, the primary and the secondary, should be in established with the bridge team. If this involves the use of portable radios, then the ship should be clearly identified by name to prevent conclusion with other users. Appropriate PPE should be in place of CPR's protections, including the safety helmet, safety shoes, and gloves. A toolbox meeting should be conducted between the masters and officers, officers in charge of mooring parties to discuss the mooring plan, the lines that are going to be used, the involvement with the terminals or port personnel use of tags, environmental conditions, and communication details. Especially, special considerations and instructions should be made for SNAP, box zones, and line under the tensions in order to avoid incident due to the line failures.